Hello everyone, happy Monday to you. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I finally got my new glasses and I'm not getting headaches, so praise God for that. I am going to do the first chapter of Revelation 8 and just only half of the chapter and then I will finish off tomorrow with the last half of it. So today we're going to talk about the seventh seal and the golden censer. So I'm going to get right into reading that scripture. So Revelation 8 verse 1. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. The smoke of the incense together with the prayers of the saints went up before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it to the earth. And there came peals of thunder and flat, uh, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. And we're going to stop there. That was to verse 5. So then we're going to discuss this and break it down because it's rather interesting, okay? So first of all, last week we passed on from learning about the seven, uh, the seal judgments, and now we're into the trumpet judgments. And they're going to go through Revelation 8 and 9. The intensity of the judgments are going to start to increase. And the trumpet judgments and the bowl judgments that we'll read about all involve the earth, the sea, rivers, heavens, mankind, armies, and angry nations. The trumpet judgments are released during the first half of the tribulation, and the bowl judgments are released during the second half of it. Also, what's interesting is if you compare the plagues that were sent on Egypt in judgment, they're very similar to these, okay? So contrasting also these two mindsets from the Pharaoh in Egypt and the people in Revelation um, that we'll get to what they said, we see that they're both rebellious. They're stiff-necked, they're unrepentant. Pharaoh, if you remember back in Exodus 5-2, said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? When he was told what was coming to him and asking him to repent and let them go, this is what he had said, which shows stiff-necked, you know, rebelliousness and leading to judgment. And the plagues thereafter, you know, that, that plagued him in his um, country. And then as we get into Revelation 21, it states, nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. So they're also hardened in their hearts. And even after the judgments were coming upon them, they remained stiff-necked, rebellious, and unwilling to repent. Okay. So moving on to the second portion that I think is very interesting. It says, before the judgment, there is silence in heaven for about 30 minutes. And John doesn't say the reason for it. Um, but if you think about it, this is something I thought of. Uh, in heaven, there's always praise going on, praise and worship. And it's seeming that that is stopped. And to me, you know, I was thinking about it and I was thinking about the solemnness of the moment of what is about ready to come upon the earth and mankind and heavens, you know, and it's a very solemn and sober moment and judgment is coming. And that's what I was reflecting on when I thought about those 30 minutes. Now, what's interesting also in the Old Testament in several passages, they talk about this in advance. So in Zephaniah 1.7, it says, Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. So it's talking about silence before the day of the Lord being at hand in Zephaniah 1.7. Also in Habakkuk 2.20, it says, The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. 
And then I'm going to read a, a portion of scripture from Zephaniah 1, 14 through 18. And it speaks of this day and the trumpet blast itself. It says, the great day of the Lord is near, near and coming quickly. Listen, the day of the Lord. Then the cry of the mighty will be bitter. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of destruction and desolation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, a day of a horn blast, a trumpet blast, and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the high corner towers. It will. I will bring such distress on mankind that they will walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood will be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to deliver them on the day of the Lord's wrath. The whole earth will be consumed by the fire of his jealousy, for indeed he will make a sudden end of all who dwell on the earth. So this was spoke of before uh, the book of Revelation prophesying about this day. Okay, so notice moving into the seven angels, they're given trumpets, okay? And Jews would definitely understand the meaning of trumpets because trumpets were used to call God's people together, announce special times sounding at the law at Mount when it was given at Mount Sinai. Uh, when kings are anointed, trumpets were uh, blown. Also when Jericho was demolished. And also, if you remember, Jesus Christ's voice also sounded like a trumpet to John when he brought him to heaven to reveal all of this. And also we're told about a trumpet sound at the rapture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And also trumpets are used to declare war. So lastly, we now see an angel who has a golden censer and he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints. So saints are all Christians, not a select few. Uh, Christians are called saints in the Bible. So burning of incense in their tabernacle on the altar was a picture of prayer ascending to God. And for centuries, Christians have been praying, thy, will, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay. And also remember that the martyrs were praying to be vindicated during this time. Um, Christians have been praying for the law, uh, you know, the Lord's um, you know, justice to be served on terrible things. I know when I read the news, I get so disgusted and I always pray that justice would be served, that the Lord's will would be done and that, you know, um, he would judge those who are evil and wicked and also that they would repent of their sins. So in this scene, the angel takes the censer and he fills it with fire from the altar and he hurls it to the earth to begin the judgments. And the, if you think about this, the prayers of God's people are involved in executing judgment on the earth. So remember that the prayers of God's people are involved in executing judgment on the earth. So don't ever think that your prayers are not heard. They are heard. They are kept they are recorded and they are used, okay, for action for the Lord. And then it says in this action, we see that there are thunder, rumblings, lightning, and an earthquake. And so ending this, we'll finish the chapter lesson tomorrow and discuss what happens with the whole trumpet judgments, which is really a sad thing. You know, when I was reading through this chapter uh, prior to writing this, um, you know, I get saddened when I see the destruction of the earth. And I know that this is to come, but it really is a very sad thing because I love looking uh, at God's creation and what he has made and to see what happens to it is very sad. And then it's angering also to see how the people respond. And we can see that why God, it's necessary for him to do this. I hope that everyone has a great day. And remember that your prayers are heard and they are used. God bless.